It's cell division time. Old fashioned division way. Works best every time. Here we go. So there's lots of compare and contrast in this unit here. And what we're comparing and contrasting are two cell division processes. Um, and that, this is interesting. Um, I just noticed that. This is straight out of the syllabus, but that should be mitosis right there, not meiosis and meiosis, because there's not much difference between meiosis and meiosis. So now that I've corrected that, um, so here we have, um, we're going to talk about reproduction quite a bit, both um, involving mitosis and meiosis. Um, and then genetic variation may make it happen or may limit it. These are the things in the syllabus again. These are the things that will be on the test. Specific events occurring in each of the states of the cell cycle. Cell cycle is a phrase here. Slash phases of mitosis. Explain how mitosis, da 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 da. Maintaining chromosome number. That goes with limiting genetic variation. If you have the same chromosomes, you don't have much variety. So that's a basic idea here, okay? Now we're going to also have mutations connected to cancer, right? Uncontrolled cell growth is cancer, which they should say right there. Okay, so this is an amoeba, and this is how amoeba reproduces. So that's why I wore this shirt. If you can see this shirt, this is from the Amoeba Music Company in Los Angeles, California. Big, old, mu huge music store with albums and CDs, which you don't see anymore, and everything musical in this place. Very neat. So there's my shirt. This is how this amoeba reproduces, the kind of reproduction called asexual reproduction, which means from one parent, you get two babies. In sexual reproduction, the basic idea is two parents make one baby or more, right? Asexual reproduction difference, again, we're comparing and contrasting, is also genetically these two babies are exactly like each other and exactly like their parents. Why is that? Because this parent's DNA replicated. And barring mutations, that replication produces exact copies that are going to end up in each of the kids. But what happens when two parents make a kid here is the meiosis kind of cell division, which makes those things we've already called gametes, and they have a different combination of genes, and that's why the kids get different combinations of genes than either parent, even though they get them from their parents. So that's that basic idea. So what else does this kind of cell division Besides, maybe if you're a one cell thing, be the way you reproduce. Well, if you're a multicellular thing like us, this is how you grow. And this is how also you replace and repair cells that are damaged and are dead. And so there's your, what are the functions of this kind of cell division called mitosis. Okay, so this kind of is just, we, just what we said. Um, at one point in time, you look like this, right? That was just before, or excuse me, just after. You were one cell that we called a zygote. You're now on your way to becoming what we're going to call an embryo and then a fetus and then whatever your name is. Okay, so here we have some language that we're going to see all the time. Parent cell and it's two copies, right? I shouldn't have said that. It's two cells that it divides into with copies of that same DNA are daughter cells. Very sexist. They're never called son cells for no good reason. It's daughter cell yeah, about replication, which we've already studied happening before these processes. We're going to get more specific in just a second. We've had these words already. Cells that are not directly involved in reproduction are called somatic cells. And if you're a human, like I think you are, right, you have 46 of those strands of DNA that we call a chromosome. Each chromosome is one strand of DNA, right? But if you're the kind of cell that's on its way to the next generation, a gamete, you have just half of those. We'll get more to, re we should, probably should have left this slide for later. Um, but here we go with some more language that we haven't quite had yet. 
So we said that this thing called a chromosome is one strand of DNA. It's also got a bunch of protein stuck to it, and that's why in this little diagram and in this, this actual micrograph, it looks kind of pretty thick. It's very much coiled up around all those proteins, but it's one piece of DNA until it copies itself. And then this one piece of DNA, when it goes through replication, the two copies for a while are stuck to each other. And that's what makes them look like an X, the kind of familiar X-shaped chromosome is what is there only after replication has happened. And now we're gonna have this idea, okay? And we, we've mentioned this before. This, we're gonna call a single-stranded chromosome. We're gonna use that word strand, which remember we used when we talked about DNA being a double-stranded molecule, the double helix. Each strand we were talking about then was a string of nucleotides, which was like half a ladder. And then when you hydrogen bond them in the middle, you have this double-stranded molecule. Well, that's what this thing is made of. But now we're calling this a single strand when we're talking about a chromosome. Here where we're saying this was a double-stranded molecule, now we're talking about that body we call a chromosome. We're calling this a single-stranded chromosome and this a double-stranded chromosome. So not to be confused with the use of the word strand in both cases in both cases involving this molecule DNA, but in both cases being used a little bit differently. So here's the simple idea of what's gonna happen. Before cell division happens, this happens. Replication, this single strand becomes two copies, double strands stuck together for a little while, but then they're gonna be separated, right? And one's gonna end up in one cell and one's gonna end up in the other. So this parent cell up here had this and the two daughter cells have the same thing. Here's the word that I've uh, pretty much covered up, except that here it is right here. Here's another chroma word. We have chromosome, right? We had chromatin. If you're in a cell, here's the nucleus. All the genetic stuff, all these pieces of DNA combined is called genetic material. Chromatin is what the synonym for genetic material is. But only when you have two copies stuck together, like you do here in a double-stranded chromosome, do you call each of those a chromatid? So that's what a chromatid is. To say it another way, putting these words together, a double-stranded chromosome, one double-stranded chromosome, consists of two identical chromatids. Sometimes we call them sister chromatids when they're stuck together. But once we pull them apart, we're not gonna call them chromatids anymore, even though a second earlier we were. We're gonna now call them chromosomes again. Okay, so now, here we have some more vocab and some more uh, because this is the way this works. When we talk about what happens with the nucleus of a cell in these chromosomes in that nucleus, they copy themselves, everything separates, they end up in different cells. We call what happens with the chromosomes mitosis. But then the entire cell being divided in half, we call cytokinesis. And the reason we have those two words is because one doesn't always happen after the other. First, the chromosomes divide, but sometimes the cells don't divide. And so, for instance, the most common example, a muscle cell kind of looks like this, very long and thin. And a muscle cell has a whole bunch of nuclei. The most common kind of cell has just one nucleus, but some cells have a whole bunch. And a muscle cell is the most common example. And in that muscle cell, the way it got to have a whole bunch of nuclei was that a cell with just one nucleus had mitosis happen, so that it had two sets there, two nuclei, but then it didn't divide. And then again, it's nuclei divided, but the cell didn't divide. Mitosis happened, but cytokinesis didn't. Now, normally, that's about all we're going to talk about this, but normally in the normal course of things, when a cell does mitosis, so it gets copies of its chromosomes, then it does cytokinesis right after that. 